सर आई फेल टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ कैन आई रिक्लेम हैप्पीनेस हाउ कैन आई बी हैप्पी वेन आई कैन क्लियरली सी हाउ माई टेंडेंसीज ओवर विच आई हैव लिटिल कंट्रोल हैव टेकन ओवर द बेटर ऑफ मी हाउ कैन आई बी हैप्पी वेन आई कैन सी दैट द टाइम इज रनिंग आउट एंड आई हैवेंट लिव ग्रेसफुली हाउ कैन आई बी हैप्पी वेन आई नो दैट इफ दिस कंटिन्यूज देन माई लाइफ यू आज दिस क्वेश्चन वाई एल रिमेनिंग अन हैप्पी दैट्स वाई यूर आस्किंग हाउ कैन आई बी हैप्पी हाउ विल यू रिक्लेम द हायर हैप्पीनेस इफ यू कॉन्टिन्यू टू क्लच द लोअर वन If I'm asking, how do I be happy? What's my current state? I'm unhappy. So you are clutching unhappiness and then asking, how do I be happy? Otherwise, why would you ask, how do I be happy? For sure, you are unhappy. And if you are unhappy, what are you doing? If you are unhappy, what does that mean? So this is your state. This is your state. Four fingers and one thumb. fiercely clutching unhappiness and with an innocent face asking the teacher how do i be happy so can you please relax firstly now now let's talk but now there is no need to talk because the unhappiness itself is gone how will you ever embrace higher happiness if you have already embraced four kinds of lower happiness you imagine a person he is already in embrace with four lowly people and he is asking how do i embrace the higher one he is standing out there well he is available are you available what are you in embrace with how many of them four of them these four don't come to you uninvited or or unsolicited you cooperate withdraw that cooperation withdraw your consent these four will retreat out of shame the energy their embrace has is actually just a reciprocal of the energy you put in embracing them have you experienced that somebody comes to embrace you right and initially it's just a just a formal embrace you know he puts his arms around your shoulders and probably wants to be done with it but you are in some mood you decide to hug him tightly and if you're hugging him tightly for a while what does he do he reciprocates by hugging you almost equally tightly so do not say that all these lowly ones are embracing me so tightly how do i get rid of them first of all you relax your embrace they are just reciprocating they are in a sense your mirror images you leave them they'll leave you we don't want to leave them right additionally you want to enjoy the 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 righteous pleasure that comes with saying oh but i'm a victim they are the ones who are surrounding me and and dominating me they aren't they are just responding to the warmth in your feeling you are so warm towards them when they are nice civilized people how can they remain cold getting it higher happiness is not difficult to get probably it's more available than you can imagine it's waiting but don't look out for it when you are in passionate embrace with falseness you won't find it in the way you imagine it to be 
It's available but not in the shape, form, name you want it to have. It's there in a disguised way. Am I being clear? Do not ask for assurances. Do not ask for advance guarantees. Do not say, first of all, you show me where higher happiness is. Only then will I drop the lower happiness. This kind of assurance you cannot get. Grace says you first have the faith and the guts to drop the lowly things. And then see whether or not the higher comes to you. In fact, the moment you have dropped the lowly, the higher has already come to you. You don't even have to wait. Have some guts to live through uncertainty. When we see only one end of duality, we see differences. How can we practice in our daily lives to see both ends of duality at the same time? Pause. The mind has a tendency to immediately conclude. Pause and ask yourself, is the thing complete as it appears to me? Are you getting it? Is the thing complete as it appears to me right now, instantaneously? Mostly you will realize it is not. The thing is not complete. The appearance is deceptive. There is much more to the thing than appears to you. Are you getting it? Hmm? And this practice is most useful with the things that are the most appealing. Use this as often as possible in your moments of passion, attraction, revulsion, in moments of mental activity. Ask, this that I am seeing, this that is coming to me, this that I am experiencing, is this all that there is to it? Or are there hidden aspects? Am I seeing everything? No, you are not. Hmm? Angry? Ask. Do I know everything? Someone appears too attractive. Mm -hmm. Do I know everything? Mind has a tendency to be lazy. And when you are lazy, you don't want to question, you just want to conclude. Right? You are honest to the extent you want a solution. You admit that you have a problem and you want a solution. But you are unwise and arrogant when you use your problemed faculty to seek a solution for your problemed faculty. Question. If I am unwise and can't rely on my faculty, how will I ever find a solution? First of all, stop relying on your faculty. This is the same demand for assurance that keeps bogging you down. Do not proceed by asking, how do I do this? The right way is how to not do this. But the ego loves action, right? It does not want to Stop. The moment somebody is told, 
what you are doing is not right. What does he come up with? Then please tell me what is right. Yeah, tell me an alternative. No. You don't need an alternative. You need to stop. Just stop. That's the alternative. But won't won't a person act? You stop. Action will come from there. An action that comes from non-action is the greatest action. Remember, Vuvi. Action coming from inaction. You stop and then see how fierce and energetic action sprouts from a point of relaxation. But we are scared, no? We don't want to stop. You feel if you'll stop, it might be too difficult to restart. Or if we stop, then we'll be left behind in the race. Hmm? Like a cyclist. If I stop, I might fall down. Just a small adenum, Acharya. A lot of times this question comes uh, that the person who is telling someone, trying to help someone and telling him to stop, the question comes, which means I am trusting you. So, in trusting you also, uh, you know, there is, there is, a, there is a problem. The word is there. try, experiment. Nothing stops you from resuming your activity if stopping fails to benefit you, nobody is asking you to unconditionally and uh, eternally subscribe to a viewpoint or advice. You are just being encouraged to experiment. Is that too much? And you are being encouraged to experiment because you confess that your existing ways are not working for you. Now what else is then left to be advised? This is the only sane advice that can be given. Try something else. You come up to me and say, I keep on moving in various directions and things don't work out for me. What is the only sane advice I can render you? Why don't you try stopping? Give it a try. Because all else you have anyway already tried. This probably is the only thing that remains. So try this as well. I think the question which comes from people is out of fear of uh, following someone who might be a false person. Or who so might you have anyway followed so many of them, right? All the directions that you have tried so far were actually tried under the influence of this or that person or force or book or something. Right? So fine, even if I am influencing you, let me influence you for a while. It's not as if you are particularly allergic to influences. Look at your life. You anyway have accepted to be influenced by all kinds of trivial and unworthy people. Hmm? Give me a chance. <laughs> For a while. You don't have to take a lifelong subscription or something. Exit clause is easy. Doesn't work for you? Try something else. Yeah. 
and that's where the fear comes. People, a lot of time people think that once you have surrendered, then you don't have the choice again to… See, you cannot surrender. When it comes to the word surrender, my advice is to firstly rebel. You are not available to surrender. It's like I ask you, kindly surrender all your property. When all your property is already mortgaged to this and that bank, what do you have to surrender? The normal, common, usual man cannot surrender because he is already mortgaged at 5,000 places. You do not exist. How will you surrender? There is no you. What will you surrender? You don't have anything. What will you surrender? So I'm not asking you to surrender. I'm asking you to first of all unsurrender. Go and reclaim yourself from all the places where you have mortgaged your identity, yourself, your life. Hmm? Surrender is a word applicable only to those who are first of all free to surrender. You come to me as a slave and you say, I'm surrendering to you, sir. How will you surrender to me? You are already a slave to somebody else. Can a slave surrender? First of all, you have to be free enough to surrender. Are you free enough? You will be free enough only if you firstly rebel against your false masters. So surrender, hmm? first of all, needs rebellion as a prerequisite. We have already surrendered to all the people and places. Don't you see? Can you surrender the same thing five times? Can you mortgage the same property to five banks? Some people do that. But can you? Really? So, again, I reiterate, I'm not at all asking you to surrender to this or that or, or someone and least of all to me. To us as we are, my message is of rebellion, not surrender. Only when rebellion reaches a certain maturity, do you become eligible to surrender. As we are, we are not even eligible to surrender. Gain that eligibility first of all. Acharyaji, when you say achieved fullness, um, what does that mean? Dropped incompleteness. Is that an absolute state? state? Of whom? All states belong to the incomplete one. All states are of the incomplete one. Right? Now, this incomplete one is to drop incompleteness. Now, whose will be the state? There is no state. Because there is no one to have that state. Therefore, truth or liberation or realization are not states at all. But that is constant. You know, you reach there and it is there. All constancy is with respect to something else that is changing. Right? For example, we say the level of water in this tumbler is more or less constant. It is constant with respect to changing time. Otherwise, how do you ascertain constancy? Something else has to change with respect to this, right? So, constancy requires the existence of something else. To establish constancy of water level here, you need to have the clock up there. Which means, constancy is a word valid only in a dualistic paradigm. Something else has to exist. Therefore, the truth is not constant. Or fullness is not constant.
nothing else exists except the truth to us many things exist because we live in incompleteness therefore constant is a word that is applicable to us not to the truth how will you measure the constancy of truth from where will you bring the measuring tape nothing apart from the truth exists right from where will the measuring tape come so won't there be a stage uh, if you go by the process of elimination won't there be a stage where there is nothing left to eliminate once you have crossed it who has crossed it when there is nothing left <laughs> hmm? so there is nothing left but i am still left to watch that there is nothing left so there is no coming back as well who's who will come back so will this process of elimination can this process of el elimination ever stop you better assume no otherwise you will have hopes you must take upon yourself the responsibility to continue eternally on the path of elimination it is to your benefit the more you eliminate the more you benefit so why seek an end point and if the end has to come it will come hmm acharya ji when you say no one it sounds like based on the previous conversation it's just a subtle it's the it's not as if there's no personality or no one it's just a subtle realization that this still not even realization is because when we say realization again uh, we we protect somebody hmm, so that he may realize right we allow at least the realized one to continue therefore i'm saying no one not even the realized one so it sounds like this as well as everything else in the upanishad is not so much affirmative but a process of inversion so it's we want to get here but we don't know how if that even exists but we know what will not get you there wonderful yes and that's the falseness that's the yes, conditioning yes, yes. and it's quite simple and that's it? something that's apparent so yes. folk so by inverting yes, it yes. you will eventually yes. get there. without any insistence that you must know the truth or the end point or or the reality because all you can know yes keep hacking down what is unreal without putting the condition that you must first have some idea of the truth so it's, so it's very analytical and very logical that you're obviously, inverting what obviously, it is obviously obviously except that the courage to do this cannot come from logic it's quite logical that this thing has to be hacked down but the courage to proceed with the hacking comes from grace